Hi, my name is Susan Jaffe, and I am a former principal ballerina with American Ballet Theater. And uh, I also actually came back to the company as a ballet master for a few years, and then went to become the Dean of Dance at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts. And now I am just about to take over the artistic directorship of Pittsburgh Ballet Theater. And I am very excited because today I get to tell you about the story and the ballet of Labaya Dare. Um, so Labaya Dare, which actually means temple dancer, was originally staged in four acts by French choreographer Marius Petipas and set to the score of Ludwig Minkus. The ballet was choreographed especially for the talents of a beautiful ballerina named Ekaterina Vazem and uh, she created the principal role of Nikia, and it also should be noted that she is the teacher of the great Anna Pavlova. And so I wanted to show you a photograph of Ekaterina Vazem. Here she is, and uh, she was quite strong-headed, and at one point of the ballet, I think it was the entrance of, her, of the last act, she and Petipa had a fight because she did not like the steps that he gave her and so she refused to dance them and then he tried to give her other steps and she refused to dance those as well and so she um she wouldn't show him what she was going to do and he you know sort of mocked her but then uh during the performance she came out and did these magnificent grand jetés to thunderous applause of the audience and so Marius Petipa went up to her afterwards and um, apologized. Uh, this is the original Solar, who is Lev Ivanov. And Lev was 43 years old when he created the role of Solar. And he uh, also went off to be a choreographer and he was most notable for the choreography of the second act and the fourth act of Swan Lake. So he also worked with Petty Paw on the ballet Swan Lake. So um, I'm gonna just tell you a little bit uh, more about uh, the premiere of Bayadere. It was danced by the Imperial Russian Ballet and it was afterwards known as the Soviet Ballet, and then it was the Kirov Ballet, and now it's called the Mariinsky Ballet. And the premiere of Bayadere was uh, on February 4th, 1877, and was danced at the Imperial Bolshoi Kameni Theater in St. Petersburg, Russia. From its very first performance, it was hailed as one of Marius Petipa's most famous ballets, and it's especially noted for the second act, which is the Kingdom of the Shades. And uh, the Kingdom of the Shades is often extracted from the full length ballet to be done separately on its own because it is absolutely a spectacular piece. And um, I remember when I was dancing at ABT and I would have an off night, I would run to the audience to see second act. And many times I had tears just streaming down my face because it is one of the most magnificent ballet events uh, you will ever see. It is extraordinary and mystical and extremely exacting for the Board of Ballet. In fact, at ABT, the dancers would not let anybody in the wings during that beginning of the opening of the King of the Shades because it was so hard. And if anybody lost their balance, they would ruin the entire beginning of the second act. And so uh, not even the principals were allowed backstage during the opening scene of all of their arabesques and their balances and Alice Holmes, et cetera. And so um, ballet theater dancers used to form a circle and they would attach their pinkies with each other and they would sort of make a pact that this was gonna be their best performance. And then they would say, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. And then they would kick their foot into the center of the, of the circle and say, we're gonna do it good. And so um, it was really um, a team effort and, and ballet theater as many other companies also danced this work just beautifully. Um, 
so today, almost all the versions of La Bayadere are staged after a 1941 version of, and it's a con condensed version of the ballet. And that version was staged by Vakhtang Chabukiani and Vladimir Ponomarev. So, um, there have been many stagings of Bayadere in the West uh, between that 1941 version and now, uh, but the one that really was the most famous and the most successful was Natalia Makarva's staging for American Ballet Theater in 1980, and it was premiered on May 21st, 1980, and it was also filmed um, that night. And so Natasha did Nikia, although she was injured after the first act, and Mariana Tchaikovsky took her place for the second and third act. And Solar was the Royal Ballet's principal dancer, Anthony Dowell, and Gamzati was played by American Ballet Theater's Cynthia Harvey. And it was a huge success, and it's been performed throughout many Western companies ever since. So I am going to take you into the classroom, and I'm going to do a little bit of a bar based off of some of the steps of La Dare, um, including some of the shades, some of Nikia's variation, and maybe some of Gamzati's arms during the class so that you can sort of get to experience some of those positions and also how difficult uh, some of those positions are to achieve. So I will see you in the studio. So we're gonna start the class with plies and we're going to add some of the positions of La Bayadere into our plie so that you can start to feel those positions. One of the arms that we're going to use is something that Gamzati dances in the third act variation, where she pushes, it's, it's almost like her power is being pushed up. And also you see a lot of these arms in the first act, which is the power of the fire. And so it gets translated with Gamzati into the third act with one arm. And so we'll, we'll work on that. And then the other position that we're gonna work on is the position that the shades and Nikia do, which is this beautiful uh, tanyu back with the arms not in third, but literally twisted. And then this part of your body actually lifts and it becomes like a very long diagonal between the front and the back arm. And that's sort of their praying to the gods of the land. So really lifting this area and lengthening down. So we'll be working on that. All right, so let's get started.
Our next combination is tendus from the first position, and we are going to incorporate in uh, both Nikia and all the shades, they have a lot of these open positions in epacé or positions in croisé in a deep plié. So we're gonna get our body to start feeling what that plié is like, really keeping that heel turned forward. And then at the end, we're going to uh, do one of Nikia's positions, which is in her Bursac variation, where she is in a position like this, but it's quite lifted up and over. And so we'll, we'll start to feel that. So you really need to lift up under this side and lengthen in this arm and feel the opposition in order not to fall down as you're going through that step. So this, this second combination, which is the slow tondus from first, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do tondu and then we're gonna do that position we talked about and up and in and then three tondus to a plie, three tondus to a plie and three tondus, no plie. Then we're gonna do the deep plie, really feel that supporting leg back and up, three tondus back, three tondus uh, side, but the last one we're gonna finish and we're gonna releve up and then we're gonna do that Nikia pose and then go into the other side, okay? Here's that position. Until now, and a deep plie. Really feel that supporting leg. And we're going to close fifth and up and over. This third combination has a, co a couple of things that we'll be working on. First, in the King of the Shades, the Corps de Ballet has to do a lot of different kinds of epaumas. So, uh, epaces, uh, arms at different positions, and also the, one of the most important things is to be able to walk through space. And as they're walking through space and do that step, step, and ton du plie, and then Tonlier back. And they're doing this, actually it's quite in the dark, and usually there's a scrim in front of the curtain or in front of the stage so that you really can't see very much and all you see is these bright white lights on the side. So you really have to have it very much ingrained in your physicality. So we're gonna be working on that. And so the combination is going to, uh, we're gonna do, starting off with one slow tendu, and then two quicker, and then tendu through, and really stand up on that supporting leg as you arrive, and then one slow, and two quick, and then tendu through, and up and fifth. Now we're going to do two tendus to the front, and we're gonna change into epacé, and really make sure that that head has your cheekbone to the light, to an epacé, and then three with an écarté, backwards and really lifting up and over this position and then plie. We're gonna do two to the back, two on FSA, and this time we're gonna do écarté front and we're gonna plie and then we're gonna go right to the other side. Okay, ready? All right.
This combination is a degage, and we're going to be practicing a couple things from Nikia's variation. Um, she has these big step outs uh, from her first act variation in front of the fire, in front of the temple, where she has to degage, and she has to go past her foot and then quickly go to get up into a susu while leaning to the side. And so it actually uh, is a lot more difficult than it seems because again, you're on stage, you're in the dark and you're trying to go very much past your leg. And so in order to be able to bend more, again, here's this opposite side feeling where you lift up and that is actually lift up on this side and that is actually what helps you to bend but also we want to get the feet very close together and quickly together as well. And then at the end, we're going to practice one of her uh, positions after she, she prays over the fire. And then as she steps away from the fire, she has these beautiful steps where she, this is the prayer position in Leviathan, where she is practicing um, praying, where she is praying over the fire. So we'll be doing that position at the end. other side. So now we're going to do Ronda Jams with the three soloist shades in mind and as well as Nikia also has this step and the Corps de Ballet also has these écartés again. So we're, we're, we're going to be sort of incorporating all of those steps within this Ronda Jam. And we're going to do a Ronda Jam à terre and then Ronda Jam en l'air and then landing in the écarté plié. And you'll have to excuse me because my legs don't go high anymore. So um, I just pretend my legs are very high while I show you this combination. So um, we're gonna come to the bar and we're gonna do a, a plié tendu and a preparation. And then we're gonna do one and two and three and then a little attitude. And this attitude is from Nikia's scarf variation. And stretch, same to the back, and two, and three. And this position is one of the steps in the shades, the three shades. The 
three and a four, and then we're gonna do plie, nice deep plie. Now pretend my leg is up in 90. Two, and we're gonna do three and a four, and double, and double, and double to écarté back, and your leg should be very high. And again, we're lifting up underneath our shoulder blade right there. And then we will, um, actually after this double rond de jambe, we'll just come to the, to the bar and we'll do a little retiré with one arm up and feeling this lift on this side with an eight palm up and then try to balance just for a little bit and then we'll go to the other side, okay? I actually haven't done class in over 20 years, so you'll have to excuse me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on to Grand Baton, and we're gonna practice uh, Nikia again. And um, one of the things she does in the Adagio is she piques back to her partner, and she does a little développé to the front, and she has her arms like this. And so we're going to do one of our arms this way and try to lean our head over this way so we're up and over and then the other thing is not only it's in the Kia but it's also the shades as I've said before where they do these deep just pretend my leg is really high deep 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 deep, deep uh, plies into arabesque and then they come back and for Nikia she does a deep plie into a releve on point so we're going to be practicing that as well okay here we go. Again, you're gonna have to pretend my legs are very high. So we're going to learn a little bit of Nikia's first half variation and um, this is where she's praying over the fire and we've done quite a bit of the steps to help you prepare for this solo and so the first thing is she comes out and she has a veil over her head and the, the high Brahmin takes the veil off 
And it's time for her to do the prayer as she's the leading temple dancer over the fire. So she goes to the high Brahmin and she, she bows with her hand over her heart and over her head. Then she, she comes forward a little bit past the leg like we talked about at the bar and reaching up. And the first step is reaching up high, higher, High, and then high again, and way down, lower than I, way over, low, uh, more bent than me. Then you do a little, just a little wrong jump the leg, and PK, and here's this position we did at the bar. All right, then we get in this position, and we're gonna do those PKs where we step past the leg. We're gonna do plie, past the leg, Plie, past the leg, and then a plie releve with your back to the audience. Releve, then releve, and then to the other side. And then this time we only do two. So we're gonna do reach up, and then second time, and then over, bending way, way over, and then bras de jambe. Okay, and pass the leg, and pass the leg, and then this time we're going to do Sutanu, I'll come to the center, Sutanu, and we're going to do that prayer to the fire, which is a, a, to the fire god, and then we're going to come forward and stay in position. So with that, we have come to the end of our lesson of many steps with many parts in Labaya Dare. I hope you enjoyed your lesson today. I know I'm going to be extremely sore tomorrow, uh, but <laughs> it was fun. So thank you so much. So it's set in India and it tells the story of a doomed love between Solar, the famous warrior, and Nakia, a beautiful temple dancer. And they are so in love that they swear over the holy fire. And when somebody makes an oath over the holy fire, then if that oath is broken, there is major destruction to the land. Well, this promise was, was witnessed by the high Brahmin who was also in love with Nikya and he had already gone to her before this scene and proclaimed his love for her which she rejected. So when he sees that Solar and Nikia had sworn over the fire, he runs to the palace to tell the Raja. In the meantime, um, Raja wants his daughter to marry Solar because Solar is the most decorated warrior in the land and his daughter Kamzadi is quite beautiful. So he summons Solar to the palace and Solar and tells Solar that he wants him to marry his daughter 
And when Solar meets Gamzati, her beauty completely takes him away. He also knows that he cannot say no to the Raja and also knows that his love for Nakia really can't be open because of the class difference between a warrior and a temple dancer. So after Solar leaves, the high Brahmin walks in and he tells the Raja that Nakia and Solar had sworn over the fire. And the Raja says that he is going to make sure that Nakia dies. Well, Gamzadi overhears this conversation and summons Nakia to the palace. And she tries to bribe her to leave the land by with jewelry and things like that. And it ends up, because Nakia refuses, it ends up in a big fight. And the end of this scene is where Nakia actually tries to kill Gamzadi with a knife. And that is stopped by Gamzadi's servants. And so Nakia runs off and Gamzadi also swears that she is going to kill Nakia. So the next scene is where it's Gamzadi's and Solar's celebration for their marriage. And Nakia has been ordered to come to do a dance in celebration of the marriage. And she had a, a basket of flowers that, that she was dancing with. And there was a snake placed in that basket. And that snake bites her on the neck and she dies. Solar, who's grief stricken, runs off and runs to his den and smokes opium and falls into an opium dream. And in his dream, many beautiful maidens are coming down from the heavens and his love, Nakia, is within these all these maidens and they're called the Shades. And in this dream, Nakia forgives Solar for his betrayal. But when he wakes up from this dream, he recognizes that he still has to marry Gamzadi. And so as they're going through the next scene is, or the next act, um, they are in the marriage scene and there's some beautiful dances for Gamzadi and for the core. And all during Solar's dance with Gamzadi, he sees Nakia floating in and out, sort of haunting him through this dance uh, before their marriage. And finally, they are just about to finish the ceremony where they will be legally betrothed. And suddenly the temple starts to shake, rocks start to fall, and the whole land is destroyed or the whole temple is destroyed. And the last scene you see Solar and Nakia walking uh, towards heaven and they've been reunited in the land beyond the reach of man.